Gaudy Night is a mystery written in 1935 by Dorothy L. Sayers. It's a book I had never heard of before and definitely would never have read if it weren't for this episode's guest, my friend K.J. Delatonia. K.J. is the author of the novels The Chicken Sisters, In Her Boots, and Playing the Witch Card. She has also written two nonfiction books, How to Be a Happier Parent and Reading with Babies, Toddlers, and Twos. She is the former editor and lead writer of the parenting section of the New York Times, is the co-host of the podcast Am Writing, and has a fantastic Substack newsletter called Am Reading, which you should definitely subscribe to. You can find out more about KJ at kjdillantonia.com or by visiting her Substack at kjda.substack.com. This is the Book Hunter Podcast. As a lifelong avid reader, I'm always on the hunt for the next great novel. I want to read books that stick with me, move me, and change me. So each episode, I have a guest recommend one of their favorite novels to me. I read it, and then we talk about it. If you're on the hunt for your next great read, you've come to the right place. My name is Tim Grawl, and welcome to the show. All right, KJ, so uh, before we started recording, I thanked you for some advice you gave me about seven years ago as a parent, and now I have to thank you all over again because you made me read Gaudy Night by Dorothy Sayers, and I will tell you, I was not happy with you for a while. (laughs) Um, First of all, I got the book, and I'm like, it doesn't look that bad, and then I open it, and these, these are like the thinnest pages I've ever seen on a book. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so long. And I'm like, that's OK. I've read long books before. And I start reading it. And I'm like, am I reading the King James Bible? Like, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? I couldn't understand what was going on. The language was fucking me up. And I'll tell you, I put it down three times. The first time I put it down and I'm like, no, KJ told me to read it. I don't want to be embarrassed. The second time I put it down, I'm like. I can, I'll just be embarrassed. And I was like, no, I trust KJ. And then the third time I literally threw it across the room and I was about (laughs) like 40 pages in and you can see where like I picked up because I actually started like taking tabs and, uh, and I finally got into it and I tell you, like there were moments in this book I just absolutely loved and we'll get into some of those, but, um, And then at the end, I like cried at the end and I was just like, I cannot believe this book got to me. And and then I got embarrassed because I'm like, one, I would have probably never picked this book up in the first place. It's the what 10th in a series. Mm, Something like that. Yeah. And then and then I would have given up on it. And so, um, yeah. So just first of all, thank you. And then. I just want to hear from you, like when I asked you, like the most meaningful book or one of the most meaningful books, like why for you did this one come to mind? So, um, Gaudy Night is, yeah, it's, it's the, really the culmination of the love story part of a series written by Dorothy Sayers, who is a, a writer. So to us now, the books are historical, but they were contemporaneous for her. She was writing a book a year. She was a book a year mystery novelist, very popular in from like 1930 to 1950, broadly mm-hmm. speaking. And her hero is Lord Peter Wimsey. And many of the books are just Lord Peter Wimsey. And then she brings in um, Harriet Vane as the the person he's the person who supposedly committed a murder and he's going to solve the murder because that's what these are they're they're murder yeah, mysteries yeah, yeah. there's very straightforward genre murder mysteries and all of a sudden everything changes and any book that has harriet vane in it is a different book it is a genre okay. mystery but it's also this um there are also these stories of growth and suddenly her hero lord peter whimsy starts to grow and change and evolve and become much more three-dimensional which before he was kind of a you know he was almost a pg wodehouse stereotype in some ways and i i think she surprised herself by the depth of it and then the reason that i love gaudy knight so much i mean it's it's a it's a bunch of reasons first of all she has this heroine 
Harriet Vane, who is a murder mystery writer, who only writes genre murder mysteries and is trying yeah. to write something a little deeper, which right, is, of yeah. course, who she is and what she's doing. And I think, secondly, she, I mean, granted, she was at a, she was popular in her time, so she can mm -hmm. kind of do whatever she wanted, but she also didn't, you know, she could have just kept turning out the same thing over and over again. Agatha Christie really just kept turning out the same thing over and over again, and Dorothy Sayers didn't want to be that. Yeah. Right. So she let herself go in this direction of having both the mysteries that she was good at and this really I mean, that is the the love story in this book um, is I mean, it's it's just it's just an ultimate love story. It is to me. But I could see that if you I don't remember what order I read these in. But I could definitely see that this would be hard sledding um, at the beginning, and especially at our age. I don't. I read these as a as a teenager for the first time, and I feel like I had more time to put into stuff at that point too. It didn't matter as much. Yeah, it uh, it was the language that got me the long description. I actually went back and looked, and the inciting incident of the story didn't happen until page forty one, <laughs> right? And so, uh, and just so you know, I forgot to tell you this ahead of time. Like we do spoilers here, so we're just going to talk about the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's so a, it was written in nineteen yeah thirty six or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, if something you, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's been out for a minute. <laughs> yeah. It. Um. I mean, it, it's hard for me to start because I felt like I learned so much in the book, but I'll just start with the language. Like I couldn't believe how I fell into the language. Like I. The, again, those first 50 pages or so, I had to, there were so many times I read like a page and a half and realized I had completely zoned out. So I had to go back and read it again. I'd zone out again, have to go back again. And, um, and there were so many names and they kept, she kept calling people by two different names. She would call them by their, their name, title, their title which was like some bizarre university title for Oxford in the 1930s, which was meaningless to us. <laughs> I know, like dons and bursars and wardens. And I'm like, wait, there was at first I was like, wait, is. is this a prison? Why are and I'm like, no, 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 no. I think she's just in charge. I kept asking chat GPT. I'm like, what is a warden <laughs> of it? Like, <laughs> um, but I, I was think I might have read the book more than once before I sort of figured out that there was what the bursar i think it took forever for me to figure out you know that the, the bursar was i don't and yet i still kept coming back to it too so well you know what i did is um i did go to chat gpt and i said hey do you know the book gaudy night and jet jet gpt's <laughs> like yeah GPT's i was like all right i know no all, spoilers Tim. yeah yeah <laughs> i was like no spoilers but just give me a list of all the characters and who they are and i copy and pasted it to a note on my phone so as i'm reading i would like pull That's it up funny. and be like okay, that's who that is. And like remind myself of who the character, because it's also probably a dozen characters too. Yeah, yeah. It's a really densely populated book. I mean, if, if it were written today by a newer author, they would someone would probably be like, okay, take out half of these people, combine yeah. these people, do this, do yeah. that. Um, you know, because our attention spans are less and we do things differently but and that's part of the thing I love about it is just that I feel like this was just her being like this is the story I want to tell and it's going to be twice as long as any of my other books and okay. it's going to have all this Latin in it and I I would I mean I guess suppose your 1930s mystery reader in, in England was probably more likely to you know it's a it's she invents a whole college Right. to be like a and in england the college is within the university so she sticks another but i and i i had no visual for this as a teenager no. i had no listen because i didn't i think one of the things i loved so much about it was that it was a totally different world and yet that person that person whose head you're in harriet that was a really familiar person to me that feeling of being out of place and unwanted and afraid of what you're walking into and feeling constantly judged that is her that yeah. was what i what worked for me i think i love so about I, I forget where like about two-thirds of the way in i like looked up i was reading i looked up my wife i go harriet is a badass like and that i think that's what struck me too what i the other part i i mean like i said i enjoyed a ton of it it was really good for me 
as you know a man in 2023 to view feminism through this lens in the 1930s Mm -hmm. right because so many of the battles they were fighting like so much of it was don't let the world know what's going on here and at first i'm like why who cares and i'm like because they'll fucking shut down the college you know like we had to fight so hard just for this to just to be able to learn if we start causing trouble they're just shut us down and i was like oh my god and so to watch harriet be a badass in that world in her way i was like oh my god like she she was able to like walk that line of like doing what she knew was right while living in that world and i was like you know it gave me I feel like there's so much pressure now to kind of like throw off the shackles Mm -hmm. of like, fuck everything. I'm going to do what I want to do, no matter who you are. And it's like, it was really good to be like, no, like you can also live in under the restraints that you're in and still make a really big difference. And watching her navigate that was really meaningful to me. I really enjoyed it. And then the piece where, you know, I, 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 it's a classic romance plot where one person knows that you're meant to be and the other person just can't accept it. And the fact that it wasn't just that she couldn't accept it for her own personal reasons, which is, you know, still, you, you see that today, but also to trust him as a man enough to bring him into this woman's college world and risk both his judgment of her world in her personal world but also like you said that that whole thing where they couldn't let society know that there was you know a a mad woman essentially loose in the college because that's exactly what size society thought colleges did to women made them mad made them mad in the insane um sense so you know that juxtaposition of of trusting him with this world of hers and then I think I had to read the book. I mean, I read it really young. Um, I think I had to read it. I can't tell you how many times I've read this book, but it wasn't until relatively recently that I fully understood the way that it ends and, you know, the, the meaning of what the person who was trying to destroy the college was trying to do and why and all the, all the things that Dorothy Sayers was able to pull together here and I would imagine that if we'd read it at the time it would have been just it was mind-blowing I mean it was enormously it was enormously popular yeah I was like it must have been shocking to people because it was just like because there were parts of it that were shocking to me and we're 90 years in the future you know (laughs) and women aren't fighting for the right in England to go to college you know so um right and and it was also good because like they're I honestly, I kept waiting. I'm like, there's going to be something in this book where I'm like, well, you can't say that today. And there really wasn't, but there was this level of like these, obviously the villain was wrong in what she did, but she's not wrong. You know what I mean? Like, the, and which, mm-hmm. ma- is, which is what makes a great villain is you're like, I understand what she's saying. And there's parts of me that's like, it's like, I see what she's saying. Like, it makes sense, you know? And it's a motive that holds today. Like, the yeah. things that happen, you know, like, you could see the the whole, I mean, it's just, it's just so, like, this is, it's so, I don't know, nerdy or dense or whatever, but the whole thing hinges on an academic uh, transgression, you know, an ac- a, 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 mm-hmm. it's not plagiarism, it's a different kind of academic transgression. Somebody has hidden a piece of research that would change their entire thesis. You could see some Oprah book club person, you know, being revealed to have hidden their knowledge of some historical, like you could see this happening today and you could see them, you know, their career being just as as destroyed. And and then you could also see the, you know, the, the, the murder, the, the person, the, 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 I don't even she's not a murderer. There's actually yeah, never a there's murder. There's never in a this murder. Book. She almost pushes a woman to suicide, but like uh Right. She comes yeah, close. There's no body. All the other books have good solid bodies, by the yeah. way. But um <laughs> yeah, there's never a body, but she does a lot of awful things. And then you're like, Yeah, because it is stupid that 
you know, it you is. would destroy this man's life and his family and everything over, as she puts it, like a, you know, a, a stupid piece of paper. And yet, you know, he lied. He, he betrayed his whole, he betrayed academia. And that, anyway, it's just, it's so good. It's so juicy. There's so much to it. Yeah, there's a part where she says, like, it wouldn't even, what he did wouldn't even, like, or what, anyway, what happened to your husband wouldn't even save a cat. Like, it, like right. she makes this yeah. point of, like, yeah, there's no harm. It, it reminds, it, it, just a, like a week ago, I was talking to somebody, and Joan Alaric came up. And yeah. what, you know, what he did with his work, and I'm like, I still miss him because he was a fucking awesome writer, you know? And it's like, but his career is gone because yeah. of that, you know? And, um... And it's like that, like, yeah, but what's the alternative, you know, to let it stay? Right. You can't you know? have, you can't yeah. let that happen. Yeah. It can't be okay. Uh, and yet, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, 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 it's and a I'll, weird thing. So I want to bring up too, there's the moment where they go, where Harriet, our protagonist and Lord Peter Whimsey go on the boat ride. And she's like laying there. Th that whole interaction on the boat ride, it is where it's where I fell in love with the language. I've some there's so many times I've said things out loud about this book where I'm like, I sound like a fucking cliche. Like I hate <laughs> when people are like, oh, I just love the prose in the book, you know, but I'm like, you can't you can't say what she said in the way she said it in modern day English. Like yeah. you just can't. And their whole, like, I, like, tabbed so many parts in, like, um... The I reserved said... way of of talking about things without talking about them and the way that you have to sort of make your way through the sentences to figure out what it is that is really happening is, is just, yeah, it's not, it's very not modern. There was this moment here... Um, okay, I'm just going to read this because um, I put I put a note. I said, is this when she realizes she loves him? So this and is... I just before you even read that, okay, I just want to okay. say how the other cool thing about this, partly because it's mystery genre. I was never sure what was going to happen. Like it could have ended story. either with the love story. It really could have gone either. I mean, you knew I was as like, a modern she... reader, you kind like... of know in the same way that now you can't read Harry Potter in the same way because you know he doesn't right. die, but right. he honestly could have. Yeah. Um, it's the same. Like she could have gone either way the whole time. Harriet, you would have been all on board with Harriet if she had just been like, I'm sorry. I yeah. just, I cannot uh, trust you. I don't, I I cannot do this. And, you know, it would have been a perfectly valid, if very unsatisfying and disappointing, ending. Well, you know, what got me was, no, it, even as a modern reader, I didn't know. And then when we get there and they say it in Latin, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm like, I'm like, like scrambling to like figure out what they said. And, and I I'm read like, this in like 1990. There is no Google. I'm like going, <laughs> I don't know what this means, and there is no one I can ask. Oh like, I'm God. pretty sure. Um, and, of course, you know, I could go and get, there is a there is a, a book that takes place after they get married. So then I'm like, okay, I oh, guess okay. she said yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had to, like, go trotting off to Walden Books to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, well, what did she say? <laughs> like... <laughs> But I mean, but even that was like a testament to the tension that she built through the book, because it's like I literally didn't know if she was going to say yes or no to him. Mm -hmm. And and I could have I would have I would have been, you know, satisfied as a reader either way. Right. Because yeah. it's like yeah. I um, but I did. I was like, if she doesn't fucking get her shit together and accept him. But then when he when they had that final conversation and he listed out all the reasons she shouldn't, I'm like, well, he makes a good point. <laughs> like <laughs> he did make it, you know, of course, like I'm on the I'm I'm like glossing yeah, over Peter's mistakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. <laughs> but he makes a lot of good points of it. he's like, I was I was selfish and I was thinking of myself and I came out. I knew you weren't ready and I came after you anyway because I was so afraid you'd get away. And I'm like. Yeah, I've done that. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 
But uh, okay, yeah. I got I got to read this passage. You got to read your bit. Yeah. Yeah, cuz uh a couple pages before this, I was like um I wrote like I love their interchange here. It's like the best flirting I've ever read in my life. And then with you know Latin jokes about John Donne. Yeah, which again, <laughs> I'm not, like my I don't education know. does not veer in this direction. I might oh. add like I got nothing. My entire knowledge of John Donne comes from this book, actually. I don't know who he is. I just was like, I don't Apparently have Apparently to... some kind of poet. <laughs> oh, okay. Because well, I, I get I... that from the book, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so I wrote, is this when she realizes she loves him, right? So they've gone on this boat ride. They've been, like, flirting like crazy. They get off on the, the shore. He falls asleep um, in this, like, in the sunlight. So thought Harriet, it has happened, but it happened long ago. The only new thing that, is, that has happened is that now I have got to admit it to myself. I have known it for some time, but does he know it? He has very little excuse after this for not knowing it. Apparently, he refuses to see it, and that may be new. If so, it ought to be easier to do what I mean to do. She stared out resolutely across the dimpling water, but she was conscious of his every movement, of every page he turned, of every breath he drew. She seemed to be separately conscious of every bone in his body. At length he spoke, and she wondered how she could ever have mistaken another man's voice for his. I mean, I'm like, yeah. like <laughs> yes. I was. And yet, you know, what to do what she meant to do, you got to think she's meaning to say no at this right, point. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's meaning to just never let this go even further. And that's why, I mean, like, you know... T teenage or young 20s me is like oh no but he's the perfect man like, please, <laughs> really no you can't do this and uh yeah and it's... can you fill me in on what happened so was it something where the like her fiance was murdered and she was on trial yeah. so or... this is so it's this big cool deal because okay. she's um and you get all again you kind of have to like you have to reread this world a bunch of times to get everything because it's not our world in part. So she's living with this dude, Philip. He is murdered. Um, and she is tried in court for the murder. Everyone thinks that she murdered him. And in part, they think this because she's a murder of, uh, you know, a, she writes murder mysteries and right. she's a loose woman. They're living together without being married. And he had right before um, he's killed, he offered to marry her and he said something like, it turns out you're a good girl after all, so I will marry you. And that made her so angry because she had sort of thrown away, she's like a pastor's daughter, and but her parents are dead, so she's alone in the world, she's making her own way. And she's thrown away her whole reputation to live with him mm. because he's told her he doesn't believe in marriage. And then for her, it turns out it was just a test to make sure that she loved him enough Ooh. that he she was worth marrying so she was so angry he deserved so to she die, actually has an excellent reason to marry him but kind of has to, her lawyer wants to defend her on the grounds that she had no reason to murder him because he'd offered to marry her so from the oh. eyes of society he's offered to do the right thing but she doesn't want that defense because she's like it's not the right thing he was totally you know it's so and she's so angry and bitter about all of that in the way and you know that's they've they've slept together so she's obviously not a virgin this is uh, in 1930s uh, this is this is a big deal um and it's a big deal for peter because his family yeah. doesn't want him to marry i mean my god her reputation yeah, a she's yeah. clearly you know a slut and yeah. b i mean she was tried for murder and we know somebody else was arrested and you got them arrested but where there's smoke there's fire honey she probably would have murdered him it's it's I mean, it's this whole thing. And if you go back and read that book, it's almost so much of that is subtext. Like I didn't, if you sort of, you, cause you can just read it as a murder mystery. You can just read it to be like, well, who really killed Philip and how, yeah. because the question of how is really interesting and, and intricate. Um, but then, you know, to understand all that stuff about, um, you know, why she sort of had a motive and yet, society didn't see her as having a motive and it was even that that's the problem i mean these are deeply feminist books that didn't start out that way and that's kind of funny because dorothy sayers was also a really well-known like she's written she has a very famous like tiny thin book about 
feminism and it's really that honestly I've tried to read and I can't even understand because it's so of its time and mm -hmm. of its place that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me but um and I think if you look at her books and you look at it from this perspective her first books are just like here's my sleuth and we're gonna have mysteries and we're gonna have and they're very funny there's one about advertising that is just you you just it's laugh out loud funny about the world of advertising and um it, it's they're they're really clever but that's you know so she went from like i will be really clever to also i'm going to say these things that i really want to say yeah which i mean had to take some courage uh to do um well, again, you know. if you compare her to Agatha Christie, who never, she never went that route at all. And they were contemporary, you know, they were contemporaries. They would have known each other. They would have. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And and then here's Agatha Christie, who who has this very bizarre personal life and that disappearance that we've, you know, sort of has been the subject of much fiction lately. So it's kind of like she had, she was keeping, a, presumably... I feel like you couldn't have been a female murder mystery in writer in this time and not also been a feminist who was angry about, you know, the way that your work and your and and you know, your and and you were treated and not angry about the fact that you know, I mean, there weren't credit cards at that time, but they couldn't have gotten one because women couldn't have their own credit cards till the 1970s. I don't know whether they could have bank accounts in England. You know, you couldn't yeah. and we forget how recent all of this stuff was so that's one of the, the reasons that that these books are so just and the fact that they're written contemporaneously just makes a it makes a huge difference in terms of what you're getting about the time period and about how people really felt because if somebody writes it today and they're like you know and they lived together and they were having sex you're like well but who knows if people really actually did that then because they weren't supposed to yeah but obviously they did yeah, you know, um, one of the one of the story grid things we talk about a lot is how like whatever the the kind of core problem in the book, every character has to be dealing with that problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and isn't that just such a beast as a writer? I like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, that's I like I threw in a plot character the other day into my story, and my editor was like, I was talking about it, and she's like well how how is that person dealing with the problem i was like <laughs> well he, he i just needed him to say something <laughs> and she's like uh-uh you, you know and i'm like Fuck. Yes. Uh, yeah. it, yeah. but um but it was i i loved how each character was dealing with this problem in a different way and how even the characters inside the school that totally believed in the school's message also were struck. Some of them still fell on the like, well, you know, this is good, but hopefully they'll graduate and get married and have kids, you know? And then others were like, it would be, it would be wrong for them to graduate and get married and have kids. And it's like, well, both, both of you are just still telling people how to live their lives. <laughs> like, you know, and, uh, and, and how they're dealing with their own guilt of like, working at the college and teaching the the women because they're they're bucking what they were raised with too and and that's where i think like so much of it holds up now is we're all kind of doing that right we're all kind of like well this is how i was raised i'm choosing to do things differently but i still feel that pull not just like you know if your parents are still around or your family's still around and how much you interact with them but even like you know i grew up my wife and i grew up very um conservative christian and my wife's like, it's my mother tongue. Like when I hear it, it still feels good and natural, um, even though like we're not in it anymore. And I can't imagine like that pressure to just like pick the first guy that has a decent job and start popping out babies. And um, yeah, and you can see, you know, we're 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 adults we've been around for a long time you can look at the past and see why a world in which people fell into these roles was better for some people so you can see why you know for example lord peter whimsey should want it to continue that way mm -hmm. because in many ways that's you know if, if he can keep that and have that then things continue to be the same and you can you can see that pressure any, I feel like in our world today, it's there's there are things that are similar. You can, 
I mean, we, we can both absolutely 100% not care if people have children who are not married, which, you know, when we were really young, that would, was a fairly big deal. And then yeah. a generation ago was a huge deal. Yeah. And at the same time, especially as parents, you can see how much easier it is to raise children if you have two people to raise them. And even yeah. then it's very difficult. So yeah. like both of those things are true. It, there is absolutely no moral reason why people need to be in a partnership in order right. to have a child. And yet it is easier and possibly, you know, gives the child and an more opportunity to um, have a life that they can rely on if there are two people in their life. And, you know, then there's people, you know, it just, yeah, you can, you know, like so many things can be true at once, right? Well, my, you know, one of my therapists, one of my therapists, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he told me this thing a long time ago. He goes, you know, a, a mark of emotional and mental health is that you can hold two things to be true that can't both be true at the same time. And whenever these conversations come up, um, you know, I mean, my wife and I dealt with this uh, literally yesterday because there's this um, this woman here in, in our neighborhood who we think is has mental illness and she has this giant ass dog she can't control. And he got off the leash. He ran at my pug. He put my pug's mouth uh, neck in his mouth and I like lost my shit on the dog and then the owner because a few years ago the dog chased my kid and so I start like screaming at this woman and like telling her like all the things and later my wife's like she's mental you just lost your shit at a mentally ill person you know and I'm like yeah but da -da -da. she goes oh I know it's yeah. true she shouldn't have yeah. the dog if you can't control a dog you shouldn't have it blah 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 also she's mentally ill and is not hearing what you're saying, you know, yeah. which is what mm -hmm. makes me more and more, ink, you know? And so it's like, and so we kept having to come back to like, both of these things are true. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do we navigate this? You know? And I think that's, I mean, which is what, what makes a great book is it's like, you can't have just a clear, like, well, this is right. And that's wrong answer. Right. You know? And it's like, as you know, as the villains reading them, the right act at the end, you're like, all right, about 80% of what she said, I agree with, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> um, yeah. well, okay. I have to point out another part since, you know, we're both like tacitly in the book industry. Um, I, and I thought of this when you, um, when you said one of her books, you know, her previous books were very funny. There was a few times I laughed out loud with this one too, but this is probably my favorite part. So she's at, she, they take a break from college. So she goes back to London and she's like back in the literary world. Yeah, and, she's at somebody's book party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, uh, I've been in the book industry for about 13 years now, but I was like in Virginia and then now I'm in Nashville and I would only get these like dips into it when I'd go to New York for business and I'd end up at some book party or something. And I was always just like, you guys live in a completely different world than me. Anyway, when I read this, I was like, wait, this was written in the 1930s, not, you know, nine months ago. Right. All right. So. Um, so, yeah, she's at this book party. It's all like literary people there. Um, uh, the room in which it was held was exceedingly hot and crowded. And all the assembled authors were discussing a publishers, B agents, C their own sales, D other people's sales and E the extraordinary behavior of the book of the moment selectors and awarding their crown to blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I was just like, Oh my God, that's the five exact things. Everybody still is fucking talking about 90 and years isn't later. There some moment when she's like, no one had read the book. Of course, they just had formed oh, opinions about it. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I underlined another part. Oh, this part just as a writer, um, she runs, she meets somebody she hasn't seen in a long time. He says a bunch of shit and then he goes, are you writing any more books? And she said, suppressing the rage that this question always rouses in a professional writer. Harriet admitted that she was. <laughs> that's my whole, that's every day. That's every day. 
you know, heck, that's every time my mother calls me at five o'clock and says, what have you been, so what'd you do today? And I'm like, <laughs> the same thing I do every day. You know, I held my laptop and sometimes I typed words into it and sometimes I tried not to, you know, just, I worked. Like, what do you think I did? I, I don't know. Yeah, right when I was starting my current novel, I was like a week, like we did this long preparation to get me ready to write it. And I was about a week away and I went out to dinner with a friend of mine. I was telling him about it. He goes, well, how long you think it'll take you to write it? I'm like, I don't Forever? fucking know. Like three months, three years. Like I have no idea. I'm going to sit down every morning at 530 and I'm going to type a certain amount of words. And when it's 630, I'll get up and get ready for work. You know, it's like <laughs> that is how my day will go. Some days it'll be 200 words. Some days it'll be 1200. And most days it'll be probably about 500 words, you know, and it's just like. I don't know. And and I don't know how many of those words I'll I'll keep, you know. But uh, but when I read that part about the book party, I was roaring. I was like, "Oh my god, this is nothing has changed." Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, why why the book of the moment shouldn't be the book and why their book is better and and you know what oh. the reasons were really, you know, they picked him because Yeah, the subtle jealousy and, and like <laughs> yes. every statement yeah, um, it's, it's just that, yeah, the book party scene is, is, is just a joy. Yeah, sure. That's a, that's a <laughs> word for it. Um, <laughs> all right. So, all right. So we've talked a lot about the book, but now I kind of want to just like step back a little bit. Cause you've read probably thousands of books, right? And oh, so yeah. <laughs> when I've, when I asked you for the book, right, you gave me this one. So like, why? You know, we, we've talked about all the things we loved about the book and I'm, I could keep going. I have tons of pages tabbed here, but like, um, why this book as opposed to the others? That is a really good question. And there sort of always exists the chance that if you had asked me at a different moment, I would have offered you something else, but I can't actually think of what that would have been. The other, my other favorites have changed over the years, you know, okay. I, there was a time when I might have given you Anne of Green Gables, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't reread that now, I, I, or I might, but it would be purely for nostalgic reasons. There are parts of it that holds up, most of it doesn't, you know, it's a book of its time, and and uh, but and even for me personally, it doesn't have a lot to say to me yeah. anymore. Um, and, and then, or I might have given you uh, Robertson Davies, who I've read uh, many, many, many times, but truly, I don't read stuff that's quite that that's a more literary i don't know who that than is I. tell me who he's that a is. canadian he's a very literary canadian writer i tend not to read very much literary fiction anymore that was a different part of my life and i wouldn't i might reread those again this one i reread every year every couple of years wow. when i'm unhappy i go to to this because it's a it's a world i can live in and um yet it's very you know, different from our world. And I feel like it's kind of got everything. It's so plotty. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. you know, it, it really moves, although you, you know, maybe not in the first 60 pages, but yeah, yeah. it was page 41 in my edition. <laughs> if, if you know the characters, it is, it is moving. Yeah. Um, which of course I did. And I don't know, I still discover things in it in part because the world is so unfamiliar to me, I, I've still, I will still go in there and be like, oh, now I understand, like, you know, what the role of the the warden was and why, or why this uh, whole business with the dog collar is, you know, I can see more meaning and, and resonance in that as a woman living in, um, you know, a world where, where people still regard women differently than men and, and differently tends to mean worse, even though at the mo like things are really in a very bizarre fluxy place yeah, with yeah. Um, gender and, and race and all of that. So, and it's a great, it's, well, it's not a great, like hopefully we're going to get to yet a better place, but it's better. Yeah. But anyway, as someone who, you know, swims in that water, I find more in it every time. Um, I have more interest in the writer so I can look at the process of writing this and how that must have gone. I don't know. There's just still a lot in it yeah. for me. And I didn't want, you know, at any moment I could sort of give you the, the, the last thing that I read that I really loved or like the last four or five, but the ones of those that I'll still be thinking about a few years from now, I can't, 
I can't predict. So this one, I mean, I, I keep turning around to, to look because I keep thinking, I like there's a stack of her, it's partly her books and then it's, so she had an unfinished book, which okay. a woman named Jill Patton Walsh finished about a decade ago. And then she wrote three more, which were all Harriet and Peter, not just Lord Peter, which is how this series started with just Lord Peter. Um, and they were wonderful. And then she died, darn it. So there are no more. Um, mm. But anyway, I keep reaching back because I feel like it, it would, it's, it's there, but I, it must be downstairs because I probably reread it pretty recently. So I have multiple copies of it too. So I don't know. It just seems like this is, even though I don't really have a desire to write mysteries as such, um, the rest, you know, I don't know. It just, it just continues to speak to me. I think I will keep wanting to reread it. Oh, and the other thing. So when I read it as a, like a teenager and a, I can't remember if I read it in my teens or like my very early twenties, but it was somewhere around there. Oh my gosh. These people seemed so old. I was just <laughs> like, wow, look, this is what happens if you don't marry, you know, if you don't find your partner until you're really, really just old. Cause she talks about Lord Peter as though he's really old because he's older than she is and stuff like that. And, yeah. and so, you know, I went back to it the last time. I was like, wait a minute, she's 28. Like, or something like that. And he's yeah, like yeah. 34. Yeah. It's, you know, they're not, they're not old. They're very much from our perspective at the moment when they should be making these kinds of, of commitments. It's just that they're kind of old in their context. So I don't know. That's been fun to watch the story. My reaction to the story change as I do in fact get old. Very, very old. So you said you don't normally read mystery. Like, is there a particular genre you normally kind of gravitate to? Oh, I'm, I'm in, I mean, it, it varies. Like I used to read series mystery, like okay. just constantly. It was more that I don't think that's ever something I will write. Although who knows? Okay. I was gonna, when I first started writing my, my first books definitely involved just, you know, um, killing people that I hated and yeah, <laughs> I, I got a really excellent one about one particular boyfriend. I could tell you exactly how that went down. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know that I would ever, I, I don't think that genre series mystery is probably where I would go as a writer and I haven't been reading it lately, but I loved it. I sort of loved the predictability of, I loved as a, as a younger reader, the way, and I would choose series where the detectives stayed the same, okay. you know, so you would watch the detective grow and change over the course of, you know, 10 or 20 books. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I, I love that. Now I, I read more um, yeah, commercial fiction, definitely romance, romantic comedy, domestic thriller. I don't tend to read um, really thriller, thriller. And I will even read, I even like horror if it's a particular, like it has to be horror that's like vampires and witches or werewolves or supernatural horror because okay. I can feel pretty confident that I won't accidentally get bitten by a werewolf, whereas you could wander into the path of a serial killer at any moment. So I can't handle that. That's too yeah, hard. Yeah. But yeah, the, the kind of horror that's a little step more removed from what could actually happen, I can, I can really dig. Yeah. Um, and then when, if we step back even further and just look at, you know, because the first two books you wrote were nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And now you write fiction, but it sounds like you've always really gravitated to fiction as kind of your main thing. And I've been like that too. Um, you know, when I was, I grew up, like I said, very conservative and my parents were really tight on the movies, TV and music I was allowed access to, but neither of them read very much. And I think they had it in their head like, oh, reading's good. And so if it's and in he a likes book, to it's read. probably okay. Yeah, and they had no idea the stuff I was reading. And um, so I've always loved fiction. But, like, what is it that you think has you reading fiction more than, like, why is that the thing you spend your time doing as opposed to reading nonfiction or watching movies or, like, the thousands of other things you could be doing with your time? I, I do read a decent amount of nonfiction, but I mm -hmm. definitely read instead of watch. And sometimes I feel like people think that's like a moral stance, like, oh, I can't watch Netflix. I'm reading a book. <laughs> Books are so... And it's not that. For me, I yeah. think it's more of um, a habit 
that you know as a child I learned to disappear into a book I grew up moving around a lot I was not mm. the most um, friendly and amiable of children um, I but I you know book people couldn't tease me or, or you know all the things that happened in reality didn't happen yeah. or, or if they did they they ended so I learned to disappear into a book in a way that I never really learned to disappear into a TV show or a movie you know we didn't have the sort of streaming you had to wait for the, and not only that right. but if I think about the TV shows that I watched as a kid very few of them had much depth Yo, yeah 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 you couldn't you know, get... you're not gonna really immerse yourself deeply in the love boat um probably <laughs> i i don't know maybe maybe you could but or you know I, 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 three's company which i didn't even understand until like a decade after i watched it. i was like oh wait a minute what anyway. even like murder she wrote right yeah yeah it was all it's very just thin. not it's it's all thin gruel and so it's i just not a habitual sitter and watcher and you know books give me something to, to do with my hands and I so I really think because a lot of what I read is no it's no deeper I mean I'll read serious stuff and then I'll read yeah. you know something that's really no deeper than an episode of the love boat it's just the experience of being in it is different so I I think it's just kind of who I am and as I watch my kids who are sort of varying degrees of they, they kind of read some, none of them read like I do mm -hmm. none of them like yeah. I go through a couple of books a week probably mm. in a bad week okay um, I read you a have, lot I think that when because you know I subscribe to your sub stack and like because I'm a slow reader and um it like maddenly like it annoys me how slow I read um because and I didn't really have anything to compare it to because nobody in my family growing up or anything read much and my wife who reads like one or two fiction titles a, a, a year hmm. um we decided to read the same book this was maybe 10 years ago um the a leanne moriarty book the one that got turned little, into a big TV little show. lies yeah big yeah. little lies mm -hmm. and so we started at the same time and when she f and we were we were on vacation so we were reading the same amount of time right we we're sitting next to each other reading the book I was like two thirds of the way through the book when she finished. And I'm like, I read all the time. I should be way faster than you, you know? And I'm like, uh, but um, yeah, I, what I try to tell, you know, they my neither of my kids read very much. Um, and I'm like, there's something about for me, the co-creation of fiction where it's like, I, I, um, this is why, like, I would, if, you know, I, I hate watching movies that have been based on books that I love. The only one mm -hmm. I think that came close to doing justice was The Martian because it was all just on the surface, action, action, action. I think that one did a good – I mean, it still cut out like half the book. But um, but I hate it because it's like, it's like now I know what they look like. And I had my yeah. own version of what they mm -hmm. looked like and how they moved and how they brought themselves into it. And um, and that's what was really frustrating with with Gaudy Knight is I couldn't like I couldn't like find the person in like space and time in my head because I couldn't keep track of who everybody was. So they all were just this like faceless mass of women that like had three, to, you know, two to their their title and their name. And mm -hmm. I couldn't like keep track. And um, but, yeah, that's I think for me, it's like. You know, um, the one I always bring up is when I read Jurassic Park as a kid. I read it when it was like I was way too young to read it. I had nightmares about dinosaurs chasing me, but I wouldn't tell my parents because I was afraid they would realize like, oh, shit, he's reading stuff he's not supposed to read. But I'm like, um, you know, that visceral feeling like really there's like a moment in Jurassic Park, the book where one of the doctors is getting eaten while he's alive by one of the velociraptors and he's like they, he's like feebly trying to push the head away and that like sunk into my soul and this like i was terrified because uh, there's something about that moment in the book because there's so much death in the book but um and i'm like nothing i've ever watched no, nothing i ever watched kind of sinks into my soul 
I think maybe the only thing was when I watched Reservoir Dogs for the first time, I was like, and I wish I had not put that into my head. But like, um, because that movie fucked with me. But otherwise, it's like something about a book and that co-creation, you know. uh, It's the work that you have to do to be in there. It yeah. just really changes. Yeah, it's just a very different experience. I yeah. think now that movies and TV move so much faster and ask so much more of the viewer, that that I think you know maybe it's it's a little it's a little different, but it is. And there's there's you know did you did you watch Ted Lasso? Did you I the... love Ted Lasso. Yeah. I have not watched the last episode though, so don't. The, well, you know, last I'm nights just... we're we're recording on Thursday. I have not watched last night, but other than oh, okay. that, I'm caught up. Well, I'm talking about the first season of Ted Lasso, yes. right? I was very disappointed with the second season, but the first season, I'm like, that is probably the best season of television I've ever seen in my entire life because there it was so every character got a full arc, you know, everybody went where they needed to go, and um, there's we've watched that probably four times all the way through, and there's like three points in it where I just like cry every single time. You know, and I'm just like that. And so I do think that there's a level of depth that they figured out how to do. That's got to be harder with television than a book. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you can just put any characters you want in a book. You can you can you can give so much backstory. You can do so many things that you just can't do with television that easily. And so I think they've just gotten better at it. Um But that didn't, like you said, that didn't exist. And there was commercial breaks and like you had to wait till next week. So you couldn't Mm -hmm. lose yourself into anything. Um, Yeah. And they didn't tend to tell. I mean, the only things that told a continuing story were soap operas. mm -hmm. Um, And those were just so, I mean, honestly, that's, those are, you know, a a class in storytelling if if you were into them for sure. But it, it was a very different kind of, it was, a, you know, a very different experience to sort of be riding along with the characters sort of on a day-to-day level. Most TV and movies weren't, they just weren't like that. I mean, you, yeah. you know, I mean, oh, Star yeah, yeah, Wars yeah. was such a revelation, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all it really is is like the classic hero's journey. Um and, and yet it, it changed so much. So, uh, yeah, it, I, I just think it's, if reading is what you do, watching is not a, it's not a good substitute. And yeah. also, well, for me, and as someone who reads really, really fast, and I do, watching takes as much time as they want it to take. You can't make it happen. I mean, I suppose you could watch something at one <laughs> and a half, but I can't do that. Oh yeah. I yeah, also yeah. don't listen to audiobooks for the same re- way, reason. Oh. I'm a very skimmy reader. Mm. Um, and it, I will go back. Like if I, if, or there'll be times when I will pause and slow down because I want to read every word of a book. It just depends, but I'm fast. But if yeah. an audio book says it's going to take eight hours, it's going to take eight hours. I don't have eight hours. <laughs> well, I, I, I space eight out. Eight hours. Also that. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, I have to, because that's what, I, there's times, like even as I, I've started doing this podcast, I'm like, okay, is there a way I can like speed this up? And I'm like, no, like I've, I can't read faster. I don't want to do audio books because I space out. And then, and then even in this, it's like, um, Like, you know, you know, I was joking about getting through the book, but I'm like, you know, there's something about me bring, I don't, I don't know how to put it, but it's like, I want to respect the space by me like sitting down and just reading the book and taking it in and like tabbing the, you know, stopping and underlying and putting like, oh my God, that, you know, like what stood out to me and, you know, um, and, you know, I've been as a writer, I've been deep into the, like, just how do you write one great sentence, you know? And so when she would string together just four sentences, you know, I'm just like, oh, my God, like that I could. And again, you can't do it the way she did it without her language, you know? Right. And um, have you ever read um, the um, the Shadow of the Wind? It's by Carlos Ruiz something. Mm-mm. Um, He's another one. 
when I got done with, so it's a four part series. It's called, it's like the cemetery of lost books or something like that. Um, I think you would love it. So the shadow of the wind and he was one where I'm like reading it and I'm like, I will, I could write for a hundred years and never write this good. There was in one, not the shadow of the wind and another one of the books in that series, all in like two sentences, he described a sunset and I just like put the book down and I'm like, you know what? I should probably never write again. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. just the way he described the sunset. I was like, I, that would, the, I, I have nothing, you know? Um, and I just, uh, yeah, like, so like watching a, and then like knowing now how hard it is to do that and like watching a writer like Dorothy Sayers just do it over and over and over through the book. I was just like, yeah, I, I think, I mean, you know, I don't, uh, this is going to be one I come back and reread because I, I'm like, I know I missed 70% of the subtext, you know, uh, cause it's so much in it. Yeah, um, look, I mean, if, if you could stand it, you should get her first book or even just mm -hmm. like get download the first chapter of her first chat, like, you know, just kindle it just yeah. to see how she, you know, she evolved Yeah. as a writer. Like the first book is very, um, it's much more mechanical. It's much more like uh, it just, you know, the, the depth of character is just not there. Um, it's just really and there's one that is so like the intricacies of the mystery. And then honestly, actually the beauty of the writing and it's combined with the intricacy of the mystery. It's, it's boring because it's called the five, yeah. nine tailors. And it's, it's in, in some ways it's excellent. And it's this sort of fantastic work of perfect plotting and stuff like that. But it also, it, takes a really long time and there's a lot of description of a lot of things there's like these long descriptions of this of bell ringing which <laughs> again this is a, a contextual problem because you're sitting there going bell i don't know so now there's this big bells in churches and they used to go up and i guess maybe they still do they go and they would take nine men to go up and each pull a bell and they would ring them in these mathematical sequence. I learned all of this from this book. And she goes like in debt because it turns out that the mathematical sequences of the bells are like a code. And you know, at some point uh... you're just like, I'm just going to skim the bits that are this. And so we can find out who killed him. And then I'm going <laughs> to get on with my life because, oh, my God. So <laughs> I mean, so there's that. Like, Yeah. Yeah. Um... Do you think it's the 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 culmination of the love story that makes this one out of all of the series stand out to you? Yeah, and I I note I don't know who, who I was I was following some bookseller or listening to something and they they liked to give recommendations to people would come in and say well I just read such and such what do you recommend and someone came in and was like well I just read Gaudy Night what should I read next? And they're like, well, have you read the rest of the series? And he's like, no. And they're just like, we're sorry. <laughs> you, that, like you started at the peak. Like there's nothing, there really is nothing like it. It is a, it is a, it is a peak of what can be done in that, in that genre in, in yeah. many ways. And at that time. So there's just, there's just really not a lot of comps for, for Gaudy Night. Well, that's what I was going to ask you next is like, OK, so if I was what what would be the next book you tell me to read if, I, if I, I'm like, OK, no more Dorothy Sayers. Give me the next thing to read. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to stay in the time period, Marjorie Ellingham was another um, the, like mystery writer at the time who went way deep and had a series. And it was kind of a similar thing where she had a kind of a funny dilettante um aristocrat sleuth who has to become um a lot more and then she ended up saying a lot of instead of going the romance route like in, in the the story so dorothy sayers went really deeply into the relationships of people marjorie mm -hmm. allingham ended up like getting very philosophical about crime and why people committed it and you know and so that was so she's a she's an interesting author to explore i don't I don't know where would i go after 
after guy there's nowhere to go after uh, night. it's, it's just, only down it's, from there it's, it's all downhill <laughs> from gaudy night yeah you kind of almost have to just read something completely different and clear your palate yeah all right well thank you this was great thank you I appreciate it so much <laughs> so much fun and my dog enjoy enjoyed it too <laughs>